the race is on to solve the mystery of the fastest particles in the universe. If I were to make a list of the dangers of space, it would be a long list. You know, there's hard vacuum, huge swings in temperatures, micrometeorites, all kinds of things. But probably at the very top of that list, cosmic rays. Our sun looks like a beautiful glowing orb, bringing energy and light to Earth and allowing life to thrive. But if you look at it up close, you'll see a tumultuous storm of events. The amount of energy the sun is emitting yeah. every second is the equivalent of 100 billion one megaton bombs. It's a dangerous neighborhood. The entire outer third of the sun is a boiling cauldron. And tied up in that plasma are magnetic fields that get tied and twisted, and energy is stored in them. So they rise toward the surface. And there they rearrange, they reconnect, they twist, they spin. When the magnetic field lines snap, energy bursts out. And sometimes that energy release is explosive. And that's what results in flares, which are these huge bursts of light. It's a deadly hail of particle bullets. And out in space, our astronauts are caught in the crossfire. Cosmic rays represent one of the greatest dangers for human spaceflight. Where radiation levels from cosmic rays are 200 times greater than on Earth. And that is just the start. One of NASA's big goals is to send humans to Mars, and that is a long way away, at least a six-month journey, and more often about a nine-month journey. That's a big problem. I am hoping that one day I can go to Mars as an astronaut, but I'm definitely afraid of cosmic rays, and the more that I read about it, the bigger of a threat it seems. So. I think that NASA and other space organizations are going to need to work on how to protect their astronauts in these really dangerous situations. Only one group of people have been exposed to these high levels of cosmic rays, the crew members of the Apollo missions. July, 1969. As one small step for man, one one of the astronauts, Buzz Aldrin, sees something strange. During Apollo 11, Buzz Aldrin reported seeing tiny little flashes sometimes when he was looking around. That's pretty weird, but what's weirder is that he saw them when his eyes were closed. You have to realize that space travel was new back then. Nobody knew what was going on. NASA asked the astronauts to wear a light-proof box on their heads. It's not a blindfold. It's a cosmic ray detector. That, uh, done. This thing was made for about a size. Uh... Mark, left eye, a streak starting in the center. Mark, right eye, dot, center. Uh, the left eye was a streak starting in the center going out to the right. It uh, increased in size as it went from uh, right to left. The astronauts described the flashes as spots, streaks, and clouds. NASA examines the astronauts' helmets. They find tiny tracks etched through them, evidence of cosmic ray impacts. In some of these, burrowed all the way through the helmet, which means it ended up in the astronaut's brain, which just makes me feel weird to think about. What might that long-term radiation do to your brain, to your ability to reason and problem solve in one of the most dangerous environments that humanity has ever placed itself. The farther we venture from our home planet, the more danger we face. To find out more, scientists bombarded human cells with man-made cosmic ray particles. They discovered cosmic rays physically cut through DNA, chopping it apart you can trigger that cell to turn tumorous, to start producing a cancer. In 2019, scientists took the experiment further and simulated a trip to Mars for mice. For six months, they blasted the rodents with a steady stream of lab-made 
cosmic ray particles. The experiment found profound alterations to the mice's normal behavior. They learnt new tasks much more slowly. Their memory was affected and they forgot things they had already learned. They were more anxious and prone to giving up on tasks they'd normally complete. But down on Earth, we're protected. Out of all of the rocky inner planets in the solar system, the Earth is the only one to generate its own deflector shield against this cosmic radiation. The Earth creates its own magnetic field. The Earth has this wonderful active molten core of metal. All of that metal is moving around inside the Earth, and that moving metal generates a strong magnetic field. These cosmic rays are electrically charged, they follow a magnetic field, so our magnetic field deflects most of the cosmic rays around it. The shield is not perfect. Some cosmic rays do get through, but then they hit our second line of defense, the atmosphere. The atmosphere is like a missile defense system. Cosmic rays collide with air molecules, shattering into safer, smaller particles. The most common ones are called muons. There's as many as four of these cosmic rays passing through my hand every second. They're passing through your body right now. Muons are so abundant, we don't need a high-tech observatory to detect them. Just a few things you'd find in a high school science lab. A small aquarium that I've attached a small piece of felt to the bottom. Some frozen carbon dioxide, some dry ice, hence the safety gloves. A flat piece of metal like this, some isopropyl alcohol, then I flip the whole thing over onto the bottom and I wait. And because that bottom layer is so cold from the dry ice, it forms a super saturated cloud of alcohol vapor. When the charged particles pass through the cold vapor, they create tiny ghostly trails. What we're looking for are the muons, the subatomic particles generated when a cosmic ray strikes the upper atmosphere. Each silvery thread in the cloud chamber is the sign of a cosmic ray. Muons can pass through hundreds of feet of solid material, giving them another surprising role as subatomic archaeologists. What's astonishing is that these radiation particles, things which are very dangerous to you if you're exposed as an astronaut in outer space, have actually got a really useful application on the surface of the Earth. 2017, Egypt. The Great Pyramid of Giza is thought to hide an undiscovered burial chamber. It could hold priceless artifacts. So, rather than excavating, scientists use muons to look inside. If there was an empty chamber in the pyramid, then more muons would make it through down to their detector, just like more sunlight would make it through a gap in the clouds. As the muons pass through the pyramid, they lose energy and are deflected or absorbed. But if there's a cavity that they can pass straight through, that lets scientists see inside the pyramid. They found a spot underneath the Great Pyramid where more muons were coming through than expected. More than you could explain if the area above that spot was full of just stone. This is a previously unknown empty chamber in the Great Pyramid. What an amazing archeological discovery. What, what's in there? The cosmic rays don't damage the pyramid. Muons are already streaming down on us from above. It's non-invasive. It's not destroying the Great Pyramid as we're trying to study it. It's nature's own experiment. We've also used cosmic rays to map the Fukushima nuclear reactor and to study the interior of volcanoes. These radiation particles also give us an incredible ability to peer inside things we'd never be able to look inside or survive or experience as a human. It's almost like being able to take an X-ray picture inside a volcano. 
Cosmic rays are the ultimate space travelers. Their awe-inspiring speed allows us to unlock hidden processes and test our theories of physics. They're way more energetic than anything we can do in a laboratory on Earth. So that means we can unlock all kinds of new domains about physics at the highest, most extreme energies. They're our best link to the farthest reaches of the cosmos. To me, it's really exciting that we're actually sampling pieces of matter from distant stars, from distant galaxies, and we're getting them here at Earth and studying them. Thank you.